All right, so uh, this week we are here to talk about our Breaking favorite news. subject, which is college football. Um, and this week uh, we actually have uh, Spencer, uh, who's a fraternity brother of both of us um, and my uh, friend of ours. Uh, who was at the Ohio State game this past week uh, to give us a little perspective and just add in some additional content. Uh, I think we're going to start this week with the news of the week, right? Yep. The big news story. Two weeks into the season, USC has already fired their head coach. That's how bad that loss to Stanford in, was. In total typical USC fashion. Yes. Uh, like so the... The only thing that surprised me about this is just how quickly it happened. Like, I'm not, like, you tell me USC fired their head coach, I'm not surprised. But I think it's just more how quickly, just after two weeks, they looked good in their first game, uh, San Jose State, who's a pretty decent team. Yeah. But then they just didn't show up against Stanford, and they got their butts kicked. And it was weird, because Stanford's going to be pretty bad this year. Um, and I had USC pegged all off season as a really good team and a dark horse playoff candidate. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, I've been thinking about that too. Like, you've been telling me all all off season, and I was even like starting to be a little convinced after watching, you know, them against uh, San Jose State. Like, okay, they they look solid. They didn't. They came to play, and they put them away, which is what you expect. But then it's almost as if, like, what I feel what I feel happened is like USC was definitely like, oh, Stanford's just bad. We're gonna be able to push them around all day, and then Stanford came in and just like was just like no you're not doing that um, david shaw's too david shaw's too good of a coach like he said it's not been as great these last couple of seasons but um he's too good of a coach for you to just underestimate their team completely why well, I, I think he's an excellent coach i think that he is struggling on the recruiting trail and yeah. that is why the team has struggled but I mean, the, but, what the point is is he's a good coach, and it doesn't matter what the talent he has. Like you got to take him seriously as a as an opponent. Yes. All right. So you and so USC just all should have just won that game. Yeah. So I, they I do want to start moving into potential, and I don't know if you want to get involved in this, sure. Spencer. The speculation on who the next head coach could be. Um, right now, so, I, I have a whole list. Okay, I want to so, run through the their. My bad. No, you're good. I want to run through the interim head coach real quick. They did announce that uh, Dante Williams is going to coach for the rest of the season. Um, he's been with USC since February 2020, and he was just promoted to associate head coach uh, before this season started. Um, he's got a reputation as a great recruiter, worked with Steve Sarkeesian and Pete Carroll, both USC guys. Um, and he's from the LA area, and he's also the first black head coach in USC history, so that's pretty cool. Don't think it's likely that he'll keep the job, but... I don't think it's likely that he will keep the job. Um, however, I did see a couple, um, like, reports, or no, I wouldn't even say reports, but just, like, rumblings, that he does have the support of a locker room, and uh, if he could, like, maybe go undefeated the rest of the season and still make a Pac-12 championship game, there's, like, a, ve a very good possibility that they hire him and the reason I say that is because didn't Coach O do that with yeah. them? Like, in his interim position? Like he was interim. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, so I'm like, I think that that would make a lot of sense if he did that. But I think if he loses another game this season, they're, they're going to wipe the, wipe the table there. They yeah. want a full reset. It's, it's, it's the USC job. It's, got, it's a big name. It's got to be a big name higher. So the, the three potential... So you were, Spencer, you want to continue what you were saying about the report oh, that came was, out? Yeah, I was, I was, uh, I saw on Twitter that there was a speculation that James Franklin from Penn State had uh, some mutual interest with USC. So I thought that would be kind of crazy yeah. if he hopped ship halfway through the season, or not even halfway, but a little bit into the season. Yeah, so I think, well. I think James Franklin's it's definitely in the middle of the season. Yeah. No. I think James Franklin, Luke Fickle, Matt Campbell, um, Eric Bieniemy is a name that kind of came out um, yesterday from Adam Schefter reported that there's some mutual interest he there. At? He's the offensive coordinator for the Chiefs right now. He's like the hottest name for the next head coach every offseason, but yeah, he never actually gets hired. Um, 
but I think sure. both all of those are are probably the greatest can and then the great unknown Urban Meyer who came out today and and said there's no chance in hell that he's taking or he's leaving Jacksonville. He's just got to say that right now. At the end of the season, which I think is when the USC is going to make the hire, they're going to wait till the off season, do a, a real full coaching search. What if Urban Meyer goes like one in seventeen or, or one in sixteen and and it's terrible and just has a terrible time. He's like, you know what? I'm going back to college. So, um, Nick Saban on, uh, I think it was December 6th, 2007, when he was still the coach of the Dolphins, uh, had, had a press conference and very adamantly denied, I will not be the coach of Alabama. <laughs> so what you're saying is Urban Myers is going to be the, the head coach of USC. That being said, I have, I have a list. So, like, I, I, I kind of want to get into this just a little bit. Right. Um, so here's here's my list. And it, it is in order of, like, if I was Mike Vaughn at USC, who I would be going after. I got James Franklin as my, my number one choice. Um... I have Luke Fickle, I have Matt Campbell, I have Tony Elliott, who's the Clemson uh, offensive coordinator, uh, Mario Cristobal, I don't like Lincoln that Riley, and Bill O'Brien. Lincoln Riley? Uh, oh, Bill O'Brien's a good more. shout. There's a ton more. Than Bill O'Brien is not a bad coach. Had a wonderful run at Penn State, recovered them and kept them alive. Yeah, it kept them from going into the tank because that yeah. could have happened. He wasn't an awful NFL coach. He just got fired for going zero and four. Like honestly, he probably shouldn't have gotten fired from the Texans. They just um, he 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 it was too like he would win the division every year, but then lose in the first round of the playoffs. That's sure, sure. and in in the NFL, it's a different job. Yeah. Um, isn't he the OC for um, Alabama? He is at Alabama. He yeah. is uh, currently going through that Alabama washing machine. And I don't know. I feel like that could be a decent hire. I, I didn't even think that about that. Big brain moves. Um, that being said, I think James Franklin is the best candidate. Um, in the way that he has rehabbed. Well, he did rehab Vanderbilt, which is just like impossible. Um, and then has has Penn State rolling at like a very high level. He can recruit really well, which is something that USC goes for. I kind of see USC wanting to reach outside of the USC family, um, just because they've always gone back to those guys. Oh, he's worked here before. Oh, he's been here, and it's like, well, maybe we don't need that. Pete Carroll won a national championship like twenty years ago. Like it's been a while since they've been good. Maybe you don't. 17. Go to someone that has worked on a staff that hasn't really been good. Um, I don't know. I that's, so uh, that's so, my my point, and it, it like it goes on and on. Like, I think for, first off, honestly, like my first person that I call about is Lincoln Riley because who do you want? Lincoln see, Riley no, hang on, hang on, it's hang on. But hold on, hold on. I know Lincoln Riley is not going to I know it's not going to happen like I, I know not. that in my mind we, we it's not but think about this think about it in four years Oklahoma is going into the SEC yeah they will not be able to recruit at the level that they currently recruit because they will be in the SEC they will be competing with all of the other SEC schools because if I'm if I'm a kid and I'm I'm like okay yeah I, I want to go to Oklahoma because I know they're going to destroy everyone in the conference because no one in the conference can compete that well, so Lincoln Riley's going to go into the SEC and be like oh I'm going to be like the fifth best coach here because there's a lot of really good coaches in the SEC, so everyone's talking like oh maybe he's going to make the transition to the NFL, well USC is as close to an NFL job as it gets in the. Uh, college football world and i'd say oklahoma is as close as you're gonna get oh no 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 cody would you ever have a hundred thousand person stadium in norman oklahoma no you don't they might now with the sec money they're about to get but they won't they won't have it 
They can't fill it. What are you talking about? I think I, I think Lincoln Riley I think that's is ridiculous. A, it's absolutely ridiculous, but if I'm Mike Bond, I'm shooting for the stars, dude. Like, oh, I'm yeah. Like, it's a okay, phone call and Lincoln Riley is like, <laughs> no. It's a phone call I mean, and Lincoln sure, Riley like, laughs him off the phone. Do you try? Like, oh, realistic. Try, right? My realistic. Try, but I don't think yeah. it will happen. No way. No way. Well, so here's my other thing. Is, is because you have to have these conversations with the agents. Guess who shares an agent with Lincoln Riley? Who? James Franklin. Okay. So you, you just go, you go to the agent and you're like, hey, is Lincoln interested? Not a chance. Okay, how about James? <laughs> All right, fair enough. Easy conversation. I think, I think the, in my conversation. ideal, in my ideal situation as a closet USC fan, um, I would like Matt Campbell to be the, the next head coach of USC. I think, obviously, he didn't take the Lions job because it's the Lions. Uh, it was a lot of money, but it's the Lions. And I think USC can give him NFL-like money give him a hell of a pay raise. And I think Iowa State, Iowa State's a great place to build his brand. Iowa State's not a long-term job. It is just, it's just not. USC is that long-term job and he's proven that he's a great program builder and that's what USC right now needs right now is somebody to build that program. A bunch of Iowa State fans and I kind of would like to have them in our corner against Utah. Um, <laughs> just Hey, <laughs> I don't need I don't need Iowa State and Utah fans pissed at me. I mean, um, Iowa State is just they're a great story. Matt Campbell's probably one of the five best coaches in the country right now, but that is not a long term team. They're not going to be a competitive team for a, for a long period of time because Matt Campbell's going to leave there eventually, and I want it to be USC. I want Matt Campbell to take the USG job. All right, I think we're talking in circles a little bit here, but. I don't know. No, no I, I think that, the, like, if, if you are a fan of USC, I think that Matt Campbell makes a lot of sense. Um, me, personally, if I'm, like, James Franklin is my guy. Because I don't think that Matt Campbell has as much recruiting flex that James Cam uh, that, uh, James Franklin has. Um, because So you keep you keep the current interim head coach, Dante, uh, what's his name, Dante Camp Dante Williams, the guy who's known to be a recruiter. Just keep him on the staff. He knows the area. Keep him on the area. All right. I mean, maybe. Maybe. Okay. Sure. I'll give it to you. I think Mac, I think James Franklin is probably my second best option, but I put Matt Campbell as my as my number one option if I'm USC. So not saying I want Luke Fickle to go, but why not Luke Fickle? <sighs> I don't know. I just don't see I I know Matt Campbell's not from that area either, but I just don't I just don't picture Luke Fickle as the U C or U USC head coach. I just I just can't picture it. I don't either. Um I've said it in the past that I think that it would make sense just because they've worked together, but I've I've kind of seen some reports that saying that they didn't exactly work together well. The A USC. you're talking about the A D of uh USC now, right? Of USC, yes. Uh for those of you that do not know, the AD of USC used to be the AD at Cincinnati. He hired Luke Fickle um, to Cincinnati from Ohio State um, during that uh, year that there was a transition from Luke Fickle to, or from uh, heart attack man or uh, health problems man Meyer to yeah. uh, Ryan Day. Urban Meyer, that's right. Yeah. 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 So... All right. Well, history. there's it's so an easy, easy thing to say, but I, there's a lot of good I options. Also, I don't see Luke Fickle being the guy for USC. Yeah, I agree. So my pick's Matt Campbell. Your pick is James Franklin. Spencer, who's your who's your pick for USC head coach? Uh, I'd also go with James Franklin. I mean, that dude, that dude can recruit like crazy. I mean, if you're right, up there with like, one. if you're up Man. there with like Ohio State and Alabama and recruiting, yeah, you've got a you've got to land another big time job. That's fair. That that's very fair. Um, all right, I got nothing else on the USC coaching situation. If you guys would like to move in to a look at the top twenty-five polls from this past week, because I got some um, questions. I actually, I, I did want to run through just like a few. Um, it doesn't like matter all that much, but a few injuries that I picked up on uh, that I think are going to affect out the season. Um, so Indiana has three defenders and one wide receiver out this week against Cincinnati. Um, 
I think that that plays well to one. I think that plays well to Cincinnati only being a four point favorite. I think that they should be favored by a little bit more now. However, I'm not taking that bet because I have too much personal stuff in that. Um, so that's something to think about. I have Josh Proctor, uh, who is the safety at Ohio State, is out um, indefinitely for the season. Or actually, just for the season. Um, I think that that <laughs> makes an already pretty bad defense. Uh, Doesn't worse. help. Um, it does not help. Uh, Oregon has quite a few injuries, like just up and down the board, offense, defense. And like, I know that they, they kind of went out there and manhandled OSU, but I don't know how long, like if they get one or two more injuries, like what, what happens? Uh, that's, that's my concern for this Oregon team moving forward and why I actually think they're going to lose another game. Because they haven't lost injuries. a game yet. Oh, sorry. Lose a game. I consider that Fresno State a loss because they didn't cover. Doesn't count on the scoreboard. Um, anyways, and then Hayes King, the quarterback at Texas A&M, uh, is hurt for at least a month. Um, and they are not expecting him to play against Alabama. Wow. And so I think that that means, once again... Alabama is our SEC West champion. Hey, not unless Arkansas has something to say about that. All right, go pig, woo pig, whatever. All right, speaking of Arkansas, they have cracked the top 25 this week for the first time in several years. It's been a while since Arkansas has been in the top 25, but they did it courtesy of an upset win over Texas. Um, Anyways, that's just my transition to start talking about the top 25. Because I think we all have some questions yeah. about what the hell the voters are doing. Uh, I'm just going to run through it real quick. One, Alabama, Georgia, Oklahoma, Oregon, Iowa, Clemson, Texas A&M, Cincinnati, Ohio State, Penn State is 10. Florida, Notre Dame, UCLA, Iowa State, Virginia Tech, Coastal Carolina, Ole Miss, Wisconsin, Arizona State, Arkansas is 20. North Carolina, Auburn, BYU, Miami, Florida, and Michigan is 25. You want to know? All right, so I have, I have a couple. I have a lot of things to say about this. But one thing, uh, first thing that I want to say, you want to know who is not in the top 25? Who? Because they lost. Utah. Yes, they are. They are not in the what? top 25 wait. anymore. I meant to say, yeah. I'm agreeing with I you. Hey, I was like, wait, where? Sorry, I misspoke. Like, where, where, what? I misspoke. Okay, so now that I got my, uh, you know, rib jeering in, in on them, um, I have some issues. Uh, I have a lot of issues. Um, and I think I have to start with the 11 through the... Um, 25 spots. Yeah, there was a tweet that you had uh, sent. I can yeah, pull that so up real quick. I, I sent this tweet and it made me think. Um, I'm trying to find it in my notes here. Okay. It was like so 11 okay. this week. Uh, 11 through 25 combine for 5 and 7 against Power 5 opponents. Three of those teams, which are UNC, USC, and Texas, are ranked higher than the team who beat them. Granted, I think that, you know, Stanford should not be ranked. But frankly, if USC got beat by Stanford, they also shouldn't be ranked. Um, USC anyway. isn't ranked. Um, okay, good. Yeah. Wait, what's there? <laughs> no. no, USC's ranked. I, I, I'm looking at it now, and they're not ranked. Huh. They're in others receiving votes. But, it, I mean... It's still your porn still right. stands. Yeah, like why it's are ju- they still receiving votes? Sorry, I mean, they I, should I, still I, be I, receiving votes. I think it's a, it's a tricky because like it, a team can be better than another team in my mind and still lose to them every once in a while. So I don't have as sure, much of a problem sure. with that. Sure, I I, I I guess like my issue. Oh, all right, all right. Here's another one. Um, Iowa is ranked five. 
Too Iowa's much. offense is awful. Like, it, it's not good. It's straight not good. Like, you score two touchdowns against Iowa in the first quarter, you are winning that game because yeah. they can't keep up. The only reason that they beat Iowa, Iowa State, State was because there were three interceptions and a fumble. The defense I mean, is yeah, really good. Great. Like, you're talking, yeah, they won, and that's fantastic, but they shouldn't be ranked five. Here's a, here's a tries to argue. Sorry. Yeah. Here, here's a bold bold prediction. I will will not be in that position three weeks from now. They will not be in the top ten. They will not be in the top fifteen. A They'll lose a prediction. random game. What's a likely prediction? I don't even know who Iowa like, plays in this coming week, but they'll lose a game that they shouldn't lose because that's what Iowa does. I'm going to look at their schedule, and I'm going to tell okay. you who beats. Them. They won't. They won't lose the next two weeks because they play home to Kent State and home to Colorado State. Kent State's pretty feisty for a MAC team, but they're not going to win. They can put up points. They're not going to beat Iowa. Kent State goes out there? What, what happens if Kent State goes out there and they put up three touchdowns before Iowa has a chance? They're not going to do that. <laughs> It's just I don't not. think they're going to win. Personally, I don't think they're going to win. <laughs> At I Maryland, I gonna... could see them losing that game. That's who they face after yeah. Kent State and Colorado State. I could see State. them. Yeah. And then definitely I mean, Kent State. No. So I think I think that's an overreaction to a, what was a big win. We're not. I'm not trying to discredit a win over another top 10 team, but it's still early. Teams are still trying to work themselves out. I do not believe that I was a top 10 team in the country in the long term. So I have a problem with that ranking as well. Yeah, I think if they play Clemson right now, that game's not close. It's not close. And Clemson's not even clicking on all cylinders right now. Yeah. 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 Uh, and, and, and the thing is, like, Iowa State's best win is their only win, which isn't even against an FBS team. Yeah. Well, we got all hyped up even last year. That didn't they have like two losses last year during the regular season, and they were, but they still happened to uh, be in that one, top ten. One loss during the regular season. It was okay. to Louisiana, uh, or the Raging Cajuns. I thought they lost so, to Oklahoma during the regular season as well. No, they beat Oklahoma in the regular season and lost to Oklahoma in the Big Twelve Championship. That's right. Um, so like. The thing is, I don't think that Iowa State's a bad team. I just, like, don't understand how you're going to rank some of, like, I just have a problem with the way that the, the rankings work, because you, if you go and look at, at how everyone voted, like, there were some people that, like, voted for USC to, like, be in the top 10. Yeah. Like, those people shouldn't be voting. Straight up, if you think USC is a top 10 team, you you do not know what you're talking about, and you shouldn't be voting for the AP poll. Watch the games. It's easy. There's so it, much. It, it's I, really easy. I feel like there's just no common, uh, consistent way that you want to rank teams. It's There's there's one way to do it where it's like, what team's the most deserving? Who has the best resume? And another team, another way to do it, which is probably the way the guy who put USC in the top 10 is just like, based on my eyes and what I see, who are the best teams? And I mean, people, that's an opinion based thing then. And if you're going to do it on opinion, people have different opinions and some dumbasses are going to think that USC is a top 10 team after losing to Stanford by like 20 points or whatever it was. So it's, it's an imperfect system, but I, I, I've started to, I've started to lean on the coaches poll a little bit more because it is coming from coaches and they, Coaches know the game more than any of us talking about it uh, could. So even if they, some of them might not be the most head co or best head coaches, and some of them might have their biases against certain teams, but I think you get a better sample of who the best teams are in the country. Because like in the coaches, they have Iowa behind Texas A and M and Clemson, um, which I would agree with. So yeah, yeah. So I mean, I guess I don't know. I I just get angry because like. We talk about who is the best team, and we talk about, like, I guess I I'm, I won't be getting angry about this too much longer because Cincinnati is going to be a Power 5 team, but, um, like, frankly, I don't Power think that five. there's that big of a difference between the top of the group of five and anywhere to, like, the best four or five teams in the Power 5. Like, I don't think there's that big of a difference 
Mm. And so I just, it's in a name. It's in a name. Yeah. And because we have these people that care about recruiting rankings, they're going to continue to vote for USC to be ranked 10. And like that doesn't sit well with me because what's the point in playing the game? Well, it's all why, pointless why in the end because none of this is really going to matter. It's going to be the same four teams or same five teams in the playoff at the end of the season, and Alabama's going to Alabama's win the national championship. Absurd, man. So absurd. So it doesn't even really oh. matter. 